September is one of the best months of the year to fish the Columbia River. As the weather begins to cool down, the rainbows slide into faster flowing waters to feed and bulk up for the winter, making it the perfect time to throw big buggers on full sink lines. So it's fall fishing on the Columbia today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. We're trying a little top water action for the pike we have. So there's, there's now pike in the Columbia River system, which is an invasive species. So what the ministry has done, or uh, you know, the fisheries department has put a, uh, you know, essentially just a kill fishery on the pike. You're allowed to take all the pike out of here, as many as you need, or as many as you want to catch, and try to get rid of these invasive species because they're not native to the system, and of course they're going to hurt the system because they are you know, one of the top predators. So the way I'm attacking it is trying to top water like we do up north. We'll fire out these big, big popper patterns, big red, big yellow, a bunch of different popper patterns with a dry line and see if you can attract them up. I've got a Bow River fly, actually a seal bugger, but in a super big size. <laughs> we'll see if there's any this imitates a bait fish, so it should be anything that. Pike running around in here, they're always after bait fish to eat. There's a few areas you really want to focus on when fishing in the fall on rivers. The fish like to key where there's high oxygen levels, especially in the runs. I mean, we're looking at all these fast water runs. The water is still fairly warm. You know, the river we're fishing today on the Columbia is still in the high 60s, which is fairly warm for trout. So they'll head to that water where it's nice and riffly, where the oxygen is getting absorbed, and they can sit there and be comfortable in cooler water. So what we're going to do is work all these different runs and then fish a little bit of the pocket water later. But right now we're going to target all these runs that we're showing you here, and we should have some good fishing in these parts. There we go. Oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> that was cool, eh? Right out the end of the swing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. Oh, look oh. at him go. He just got it. Oh, lost him. Oh, he lost him. Yeah. Certainly full of pep, eh? Wow. Oh, yeah. Gonna be tough to hold on to him with the barbless hooks with that many jumps. A big well, one. Well, that's a good one, too. Oh, that's gotta be a good fish, too. Oh, that's a nice up. fish. You bet. Nice. He feels heavy. Oh, oh same yeah, size. Yeah. Oh, yeah. real nice. Yeah. You know, we can sit in here all day, Dale, and work this run and catch fish after fish. That's where the bows sit, boy. Oh, they just, a oh, nice. nice. Fish too, yeah. yeah, I've had how many? We've been here for five minutes. I've had three fish on. They're not slouches with this current either to try and. Oh, <laughs> oh, I got off. <laughs> Didn't get to test the new net out. Oh. He's Sorry. probably 38 inches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the big flow. This guy's got some meat. <laughs> Uh oh. Jeez, might have to go back to the big bugger. Oh, uh, he's going. I'm, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Let's try to get this guy in for a change, eh? Yeah. Oh, he looks big. Yeah, like those other guys, about the same as those first ones I hooked. But... Yeah. 
I'll try to get him in this net. Oh, Gord. I got him in there. Wow. How big is he? You can tell Looks right like in that near net we have. Ah, he's a nice fish. Look at that. I don't even see the bugger. Well, how big was he? Look, we can even look oh. on the net now. So oh, yeah. Okay. We'll put the two. Of course, you, it's inside out. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> no, what the heck? <laughs> Three. What does that say? I don't know. <laughs> He's, yeah, he's not that big. He's probably well, 18. He's probably yeah, 18. I think so too. That's about 18. Yeah. Very nice. Nice. Let him go. And you've lost great. three like that oh. already. Now, Jumping around. Lesson on the net. See where you get to actually read it? <laughs> net him that way. And then we can tell how big he is, you banana. <laughs> <laughs> that help, wanted... You can't even bring out good help these days. So today on The Technology, I'm with Jennifer Vogel, and she's with the Central Kootenai Invasive Plant Committee. Is that correct? That's correct. Hey, excellent. <laughs> and what do you do for the committee? I'm the program manager with the Central Kootenai Invasive Plant Committee. Okay. Now, you were going to talk about a few different invasive species that we have in the Kootenai region and probably all over BC. Yeah. So I wanted to touch on a few things. Um, a lot of people aren't aware that they have uh, regional committees within their area. I didn't know. We, we have 13 yeah. of them in British Columbia. Excellent. Um, so pretty much every corner of BC is covered by a regional committee. And the regional committees uh, look at education awareness and also many committees do operational on the ground work. And I know there's some nasty species out there because I was, when I was a kid fishing, I always saw Eurasian, Eurasian milfoil, and that was a bad one. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to talk about a few of these yeah, different things? Yeah, I'll touch on a few invasive sure. species. The ones that I was going to touch on were some of the ones that are often let loose out of aquariums. Um, oh, wow. So one that I wanted to touch on was the American bullfrog. <laughs> and uh, it's actually a wow. species from the east, but it was brought over to British Columbia after the Second World War as a back-to-work veterans program that went terribly yeah. wrong. So now we do have bullfrogs, known bullfrog infestations on Vancouver Island as well as in the Okanagan and unfortunately we're having bullfrogs coming close to the Kootenays near the Creston Valley Wildlife Management wow. Area. Wow, and how do they get around? They got a they hop. hop. That's a lot of hopping. But they're massive. So that's one if you have Kay. it, don't let it go into the wild, bring it back to the aquarium shop where you got it from. No kidding. Um, a couple invasive fish species specific to Kootenay Lake and the Columbia River are uh, the northern pike and uh, smallmouth, largemouth bass as well as perch and walleye. Those are all yeah. non-native species. And they eat everything, the don't they? They just they eat do. it all. I mean, especially the pike. And the bass, same thing, perch. I know, they just eat up all the insects. Yeah. Oh. And when you're thinking about insects, and you also look at these small, smaller salmonids, yeah. as well as sturgeon fry. Big yeah. concern when we're looking at some of these endangered Yikes. species. Okay. Yeah. So there's several other different species that I wanted to touch on as well, but I'm going to hand it over to our aquatic invasive species coordinator, Kalish Fraser. Oh, Kalish is going to talk about it. She is. Excellent. So Jennifer made the introduction for Kalish. Now you've joined us and you've got a few things you want to talk about, a few species. Yes, so there are three invasive species that I'll talk about. Okay. First, I will talk about some invasive plant species. And so right here at our launch where we were this morning, right. we have some invasive Eurasian water milfoil. Okay. And we have some invasive curly leaf pond wheat. There are a lot of native milfoils as well, so often identifying natives and non-natives can be ah, difficult. Okay. And so one key feature for the invasive Eurasian water milfoil is when you pull it out of the water, all of the leaflets collapse against the stem. Ah. If you pull the native northern milfoil out of the water, the fronds will stay rigid, oh, okay. even out of water. What, how, how long can these stuff live for? That's a good question. So typically for aquatic plants, we like to say about five to seven days out of water. Okay. but then also somewhere that would be hot so in the sun ah, so okay. if it were sitting somewhere hidden away in a damp maybe um, storage compartment on a boat right. or something like that in a live well ah, it okay. could stay viable for longer and then the invasive species the zebra and quagga mussels they can live for basically three to 30 days wow. out of water, depending on the humidity and the okay. temperature. And they'll actually, will they cling to something or do they just, how do they get in the boat or how yeah. do they get with that? So the mussels, when they're adults, they have what's called bissel threads, okay. which are native mussels do not have, and that oh, allows them okay. to attach to any hard surface. And in their juvenile stage, when they're larvae, they're free floating and they're transparent. So they're <laughs> invisible to so the naked eye. 
Wow. And yes, and they can say if you had a damp spot in your boat where you had your water ski yeah. and your rope and your life jackets and they're damp and there was water in there. And if that moisture is maintained, the villagers could be in there for up to 30 days. And then wow. you're going off to another water body, jumping in. Dropping the rope and yeah. off they go. Yeah. Oh, crazy. Absolutely. So you got to take care when you're out there. Boating, yeah. no matter what you're doing, whether you're fishing or, you know, jet skiing, water skiing, anything. Absolutely. You've got to take care out there. Beautiful. Well, yeah. thanks for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. Very informative. Great. Right on, Don. Awesome. Yeah, we should head down to the next run. You know, it's very similar to what we would experience on the Bow River when we used to fish the Bow in the fall. And you get in there and you get like, you know, we, we hit probably eight fish right off. Boom, 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 boom. The, the feeding fish, the ones that are very aggressive. And then uh, that's it. Then it's time to move on to the next run. You get real aggressive fish in feeding. And then the rest of them are kind of laying dormant, taking their turn. So when there's lots of water like we have here, best to go down and try different runs. So, okay, electric is down to the next run. I'll just, we'll fish this one out, pull us okay. across here, and we got lots of runs like this. But again, so important in the fall, you gotta find that high oxygen water. That's, that's where the fish are sitting. So I just wanna talk a little bit about this run. Now the other run was really fast water, shallow water. You had a lot of oxygenation happening. Fish were sitting just below the below those rock seams, anywhere they can hide. This is more a pocket water stretch, and we again you can see the difference here. It's not as it's not as oxygenated. It's just a little bit a little bit calmer water, but there's nice big boulders where the fish can sit and rest. And all we're doing is casting out using the down to cross technique with our with our different uh, woolly bugger patterns. And it's, it's great because these big fish will come in here again. They know they could pick up big food items just cruising through. And it works really good if you use the down across pattern. So again, cast it out, let it swing kind of down across. And I even like to put a little bit of a strip on it once in a while just to give that, that bugger some motion. Get the tail wiggling a little bit and attract the fish. And if you, and all we're doing too with the anchor, so I've got anchor rope out. And all I'm doing is feeding it down. So I've anchored upstream, we start at the head and then we work our way all the way down. I just keep letting anchor rope out, work another section, let out another 10, 15 feet, and work another section. You can catch a couple of, couple of fish in each section. And we just got here and Dale had one on, so. Oh, there we go, there we go, fish on. That's, oh, that's a nice one. Oh, that's a good one, you hit right there. Right when I was stripping back. Oh, ho, ho, look at him go. Whoa, he's going, he's tail walking. <laughs> It's great when you get them in this pocket water. That guy's just heading downstream. Wow, and that was on the strip back, so we're anchored right along the seam. There's two feet of water right here. Oh, and he's just dancing back there. And they follow it all the way, so you want a nice long cast out, and those fish will follow it right to shore. And that guy just hit it right when it finished the, finished the strip in and stripping it back. Oh, he's a nice one. You know, it's easy the average size when you get them, but boy, are they ever scrappy right now. There he is there. Oh, and you even did it on the right way this time. <laughs> fly, out. fly, there's there's a fly. And again, you know, this one's got a little more crystal flash. This is more like the Columbia River bugger. But they're all so good. We've got the right colors in there. So let's show this guy. How big is he? This guy's about 18. And there he is there. Nice fish. Gorgeous guy. We'll get him back in. There he goes. Done. Another beauty. You even used the net the right way that time. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Could be a wally the way it's fighting. Yeah, it oh is. yeah. Is he muscling down? Yeah, yeah. yeah I bet you he's a walleye. <laughs> That's good. Those are uh, those are good keepers, right? Those are the Oh <gasps> Austin. No. Yeah, he was muscling right down. Oh, right? that would have been good. Had lots of weight. Gee, oh, well. wait, I wanted <laughs> to see that. Right Those are good pool. eating fish. Those are the best this time of year. <laughs> He's not had a good ratio. No kidding. On the hookups. I was stripping him in too, and it was definitely, I think you were right though, it definitely wasn't a rainbow. It was just dogging like. Yeah, but that's good. Those nice walleye are nice to show. We 
had a lot of fun. We fished about four or five different runs up above, had some good fish. Of course, couldn't keep too many of the big ones on. I don't know, Dale had the bad hawker. Could just be the fisher on. <laughs> I don't know, they're good. just fighting that much better. <laughs> exactly, dude. yeah, they're, it's fall. It's just they fight good. And we always finish off in the big holes. So if the fish are coming up, it's nice because you can get some real large fish in these big holes late at night. And of course, we've got the dry fly, maybe some indicator. So we'll see if they're not uh, if they're not taking our, our buggers near the top. We'll switch over, just finish up for the last hour in the big holes. Today on the bench, I want to tie you up the green seal bugger. This was originally tied by Dan Rickards for still waters, but it's also very effective in moving waters. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a size 10 4X long streamer some ADOT olive thread to tie with, some olive marabou for the tail, some pink polar flash for the tail highlights, some dark olive UV2 seal X for the body, and a burnt orange grizzly hackle for the hackle. To start the fly off, I've taken my thread, already tied it on, and I've taken a good clump of, of marabou. I want a, really an entire feather. And the key here is I want to build up the body a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, just measure the marabou boat, you know, about the right length or close to it because I'm actually going to pull it to cut it. And I'm going to start right by the eyelet and work my way back with the thread. So I'm actually going to build a little bit of a body at the same time I'm tying this tail in. It also keeps the body very uniform. When I get to the back, I'm going to take a couple of, couple of wraps behind the tail just to help hold it up. And then I'm going to measure both the length of the body for the tail and then pull it and cut it. And that makes our tail. Now the tail's tied in, I'm going to take two strands of my polar flash and I'm going to put it on the thread and I'm going to actually draw it down just slightly on the sides. I want it to kind of be on the, the top side of the fly, either side, and then just cut it off and make it about the length of the tail. Now that the tail's tied in and finished, I'm taking one hackle and what I'm going to do is lay it with the shiny side out right beside the hook and pull all the barbs back. So pull them all out so they're all showing and exposed and I'm going to strip off one side and the side I'm going to strip off is the top side so as long as it's facing towards you with the shiny side out I'm just going to pull off the one side and just strip off all those barbs so you can see that whole one side is stripped of the barbels so what I'm going to do is tie that in by the tip and again critical to tie it in by the tip and wrap that in Another important ingredient of this fly is the seal X, the kind of dubbing, and that's why it's called the seal bugger. Is we're going to make a dubbing brush. So what I'm going to do is make my dubbing loop, and I kind of judge about double the length of the, the hook, because normally once you wind it up, it'll be about the length of the hook. So I form my dubbing loop, move my thread right back to the front of the eyelet, and then what I'm going to do is start placing my dubbing into the loop, and just lay it in there nice and easy and nice and loose and fill up your dubbing brush. Now that we have all the dubbing in the loop, I'm going to spin it. And as you spin, once you get it, uh, you know, you spin about 10-15 uh, times, start pulling out the excess material and fluffing out all the, all the material in that dubbing brush because we want this to imitate, again, more, more of a fuller body. So all these extra fibers that are pulled out, we can save them. So you can see the dubbing loop after I spun it up. There's lots of fibers still hanging out here. That's good, but it's a real nice and thin. So I've picked them all out, and now we're going to wrap it forward to form the body. Now you can see that you've got quite a bushy body with all those green fibers, and now we just want to blend in the orange into there. So what I'm going to do is start wrapping around, and again, just keep pulling back as a hackle as you go. And I want about four or five wraps up the fly. There's three and four. And then finally, when I get to the head, I'll take a few extra wraps just to form a little bit of a, a head on the fly. Now the hackle's tied in. You can see it's blended nicely with the body. What I'm going to do is pull all the fibers back and create a little bit of a head on the fly. We want uh, the very front color to flare back a little bit. And we formed just a small head on the fly. To finish the fly off, taking my whip finisher, and I normally give it a just two or three there and give it another, another couple of whips just to make sure you've got a good knot. 
and a lot of times I'll head cement the fly but in this case it's good enough for the whip finish and cut off your thread so there it is the finished green seal bugger if you're ever having problems finding fish this is a good pattern to start with well we'll keep fishing for a bit but pretty good day overall you know yeah it was good we had lots of fish hooked not many landed <laughs> well <laughs> no. they were really good fighting like that's the big thing they slammed it and they're jumping all yeah. over the place hard to get in that's the beauty of the fall you yeah. know the, the water starts to cool off again you get uh, active fish no spawners left they're all fresh fish fed all summer they're big and hungry and good to go but you know if you're ever going to come out in the fall make sure you hit that faster water like we showed you the pocket water anything that's high oxygen level you know the water's still warm they want to sit in that faster water and i clutched up today i got the bad head cold <laughs> hey clutched up came out fishing you know it's pretty tough to come out fishing with that bad head cold <laughs> anyways when you're out here take care conserve our waters thanks a lot to the bulldog coming out again and we'll see you next time when we take your sport fishing on the fly and always we're gonna try for one more we gotta yeah it's oh, that yeah, time of night evening, right yeah God. Can, can't film it but <laughs> yeah, yeah we can still play the fish to watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.